Yet another AR-15 afloat in a vast sea of AR-15s. What sets this one apart and why should you care? Stay tuned. What is up guys, my name is John with pewpewtactical.com, your definitive source for gun reviews, gear guides, and all things that go bang. We probably don't have to tell you that the market is absolutely saturated with AR-15s from just about every major manufacturer out there. And each one of those manufacturers has a vested interest in convincing you that their AR is better than the competitors for insert tactical sounding marketing term here. Now we typically don't find the need to review every AR-15 out there because making the same video 30 times isn't really fun for us and it's probably not very interesting for you. Generally speaking, we only enjoy reviewing ARs if they bring something specific and tangible to the table. For instance, we cover PSA stuff because of the price point and overall value. We made the effort to check out Battle Arms' super lightweight survival AR build, and we've taken a look at some higher end stuff like LWRC and have been a bit unimpressed in all honesty. So where does that leave a company like BCM and what specifically makes them special enough to review? Considering BCM's generally stellar online reputation and the fact that we have folks asking for the answer to that very question on almost every AR-15-centric article we produce over on the website, we figured it might be high time to find out. And Rainier Arms was cool enough to hook us up with a BCM BFH 16-inch M-Lock upper receiver and BCM lower group. Thanks, Rainier. Love you. Straight from the get-go, the build quality on the BCM parts is fantastic. Everything feels solid, the finish is great, and there is zero play or wobble on any of the components. Front to back, we've got a BCM Mod Zero Compensator, which might look like a standard birdcage at first, but there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. BCM themselves note that the Mod Zero wasn't designed with competitions in mind. Rather, it's meant to mitigate flash, recoil, and lateral pressure for tactical applications, specifically aimed at teams working in CQB environments. While we didn't have the opportunity to do any indoor shooting with the rifle, I was actually pretty surprised that the Mod Zero Comp provided a level of recoil mitigation pretty close to the Faxon muzzle brake I've got on my personal AR. But with the added benefit of not ringing our videographer's bell anytime he was parallel to my barrel while shooting. You're still going to get a tiny bit of muzzle climb, but it's super soft and controllable, and much less than with a standard A2 flash hider. The barrel itself is 16 inches total as mentioned, and is chrome lined, government profile, and cold hammer forged with a 1 in 7 twist rate. What this means is that you'll get tons of rounds through the barrel before you ever consider swapping it, probably somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 15k, and we'd hazard a guess that most of you just don't shoot that much anyway. The exterior of the barrel is also coated in a manganese phosphate, which BCM notes is done prior to mounting the front sight base. The phosphate finish creates a porous surface that allows for the absorption of oils much more easily, and is going to guard against corrosion even underneath the front sight base itself. It's probably not something that the average AR owner really needs to care about, but the attention to detail is neat, and in theory it should extend the overall life of your barrel. The gun's got a pre-installed BCM MCMR 15 15 inch M-Lock handguard that extends out nearly all the way to the compensator. This is obviously personal aesthetic preference, but I'm way into 15 inch rails on 16 inch barrels, and the rail looks fantastic in its out of the box configuration. The rail's got M-Lock compatible slots installed at the three, six, and nine o'clock positions that you'd expect with additional angled slots in between each of the primary clock slots, allowing you to run your lights, lasers, or what have you at offset angles that keep them out of the way should you so desire. Additionally, the barrel nut is steel, and the handguard itself is secured by two torque screws, which tighten against the grooves cut into the heads of each individual screw. This all supposedly helps mitigate any kind of movement when the weapon system heats up, but that's not really an issue we've ever encountered. It is good to know if you're planning on mag dumps, though, I guess. The upper and lower receivers mate together perfectly, and the receiver pins themselves have just the right amount of tension keeping the rifle together. Compared to other brands like PSA, where you might need to hammer those bad boys out until you've got them broken in, it's just nice. BCM's BCG is considered the gold standard of bolt carrier groups in terms of overall quality. Here's some beautiful footage of the BCM bolt carrier group that implies quality. Legitimately, one of my favorite parts of this rifle is the BCM gunfighter pistol grip in the back, and I'll explain. 
BCM brings up the point that because the standard shooting stance at the time of the M16's introduction was essentially a bladed, almost profile posture, the original angle of the M16's grip made a lot of sense. However, in the time since, shooting stances have evolved to square off with the threat and present the most armor possible, which allows for a reduced angle of the grip itself. Long story short, the angle of the gunfighter grip is just super comfy, and it's probably one of those things you don't even realize you're missing out on until you have the opportunity to give it a try. At the rear, we've got a BCM Ambi charging handle, which provides just a bit more purchase than your standard AR latch through extended wings offset to either side of the receiver, which includes serrations that enhance grip. This is super handy if you're shooting off-handed or running an oversized optic that needs to sit over the charging handle to attain proper eye relief. Finally, the gun comes stock with a BCM gunfighter stock. And while I do enjoy the fact that it's intentionally designed so as not to have any sharp edges that might get caught or snagged anywhere on your gear or on the inside of a vehicle, this thing was ripping out beard hairs left and right and I'm not entirely sure why. Considering the fact that one of our other writers runs the same stock and also has facial hair, this might just be a me thing. I was at pretty peak winter hobo beard length when we took this thing out to the desert, so your mileage may vary. It's not anywhere near as bad as a Voltor mod stock if you've ever had the misfortune of firing a gun with one of those on them while also being wizardly, but it is something to be aware of nonetheless. With the externals out of the way, we now move on to what matters most. How does it shoot? We put probably close to 600 rounds of Wolf Gold through the BCM on our desert trip, with around 1,500 rounds fired total, and are happy to report that we had zero reliability problems whatsoever even without additional lube or cleaning. As I mentioned, that compensator really drastically reduces your felt recoil, and the angle of the gunfighter grip makes shooting the gun an absolute pleasure. The gun feels downright snappy and crisp, but in a good way. The trigger itself is sort of an unintentional two-stage, with the sizable creep leading up to an obvious breaking point with a pull of just under six pounds. Compared to our PSA ARs that sometimes require a good amount of elbow grease to get a loaded mag in on a closed bolt, the BCM doesn't seem to have any problems taking a fully loaded mag and all of that extra tension from the spring and follower. When shooting groups, we clocked in a sort of meh three MOA with the cheapest brass wolf, two-ish MOA with PMC, somewhere between 2 and 3 MOA with both American Eagle and XM193, and 2 MOA with gold medal 69 grain, nice, with both the original BCM trigger and a variety of match triggers. Interestingly, it didn't really seem like the trigger mattered much at all. Generally, the introduction of a nice, lightweight trigger, such as the 3-pound ELF 3-gun here, will tighten up groups on most ARs, but this isn't really the case here. It definitely seems like the BCM prefers heavier ammo as well, as our Titus groups were shot with heavier grain rounds. All in all, that's still pretty acceptable in our opinion, considering that an average mil-spec AR is going to be somewhere in the ballpark of 3 or 4 MOA. So, as for our original question, what sets the BCM apart from other ARs, and why should you care? Well, it's not one thing in particular, it's sort of the sum of a bunch of smaller things. There are lots of nice, small quality of life improvements on this rifle that, considering the price point of about $1,000 or so, assuming you buy the upper and lower separately, and save some cash on not springing for the completed gun, make the BCM AR-15 outshine other guns in a similar price bracket. While there's not necessarily anything new or groundbreaking here, we have no issues whatsoever with recommending BCM as a super solid workhorse gun that doesn't sacrifice quality to get the job done while still being very reasonable on price. If you found yourself in the AR market for the first time and don't mind spending a little bit more money to get a product that is firmly above entry level, we think you are probably going to be pretty stoked on the BCM AR-15. All right guys, that's gonna do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel as we've got lots more gun reviews on the way. Once again, my name is John with Pew Pew Tactical. We will see you next time.